Welcome to the Real Life Group's Leadership Podcast, a conversation about creating small groups where people grow in spiritual maturity in relationship. We're focused on you, the small group leader, giving tips and tools to help you lead effectively. Hey, I want to welcome you back to our podcast. And today I've got some great guests with us. I've got Fred Bosse for our Post Falls campus, leading our groups team here. And Christian Putman, who's recently come onto the groups team. Yeah. For years was youth ministry and a variety of other roles, speaking at the Coeur d'Alene campus often. But super excited that he's joined the groups team and just a, a great new addition to the podcast conversation. And today we're talking about shepherding, leading like a shepherd, mm -hmm. an important conversation. Just really excited for you even just our uh, a little bit of pre-conversation on this one. Yeah. But I thought it'd be good to kick <clears> off, <throat> uh, as we talk about what a shepherd is, was, and what that means for us, I thought it'd be a fun kind of opener icebreaker to talk about uh, dirty jobs, dirtiest Ooh. jobs that you Ooh. may have had in your past. Why don't you start, Christian? Yeah, you that's good. I've had lots. I've been a painter. <laughs> one I'm probably like the dirtiest was uh, mm. when I was a welder. So I was welding ground force. And those are like, you make the big tanks type deals. Oh, yeah. And so you get in these tanks and there's metal floating everywhere. Oof. And I just remember like having to scrub afterwards. You're like pitch black. I get home wow. and like my wife was like, who are you? <laughs> kind of deal. Are you my husband? And, uh, <laughs> it was like, it was fun job, but it was kind of a pain. Wow to get all that off of oh, me. Yeah. Oh, and it yeah. was not very fun after the <clears throat> when that you're sounds just pretty black. Dirty. <laughs> no, pitch black. Love it. How about you, Fred? Yeah. Oh man. Well that reminded me I was doing some uh roofing when I before I went into the Navy. Yeah. You know, so that was pretty you know, we'd have to rip a roof. That was pretty dirty. But I think the uh dirtiest job literally was uh I was on a ship that had a new uh system on it at the time, a new uh sewage system oh. on board so it was like a vacuum flushing system so this is way back before when these were new yeah and uh they got ago. clogged oh up and they were trying to figure out how to unclog it and so they stuck a fire hose down into it and released that clog and that went into the upper commode area oh, and man. all over the ceiling and oh. the walls and everything <sighs> Okay. That was a dirty job. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't ask this question. I love it. You're like, oh, that's that's really gross. gross. <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> Sorry, our listeners, for Sorry. Fred Bosse. <laughs> that's really gross. That's oh. awesome. I, mean, I spent a summer uh, prior to going to college kind of helping out with a with a farm and specifically buck and hay. Mm. And uh, I didn't know it, but I was super allergic to hay. I was in a, oh. I was in a loft uh, loading hay. And I remember just feeling really itchy. And then uh, at one point, I'm like, I was almost ready to pass out, came out and I had hives all over, my eyes were inflamed. Oh, oh my god! And I was like, I had to like, you know, basically never go back around hay again, because oh if goodness. that's how bad it was. But that was terrible. terrible oh, job. that sounds horrible. Yeah, breathing in hay, I can think about it now, I'm getting a little bit uh, misty eyed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's actually really good that we talk about dirty jobs, because mm -hmm. as we talk about leading like a shepherd, and mm -hmm. this this picture that we mm -hmm. see all over scripture, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't go, a book of the Bible almost without hearing the word shepherd yeah. and this parallel of what it means to be a leader. And so we see the, I mean, obviously the clearest yeah. pictures that we see of that Psalm 23, that the yeah. Lord is our shepherd and that we, you know, he's going to lay us in green pastures and, and by streams of water, we have this picture of God as being our shepherd. Mm -hmm. Obviously we see Jesus as the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but we also see one of the, one of the greatest pictures, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, dialogue this, um, you might think, you know, at real life, you know, we have a lot of vision statements. We have a lot of scriptures that guide us. And I mean, obviously there's a lot of powerful ones. One you might not have heard group leaders mm -hmm. is Ezekiel 34, which mm. in some ways actually guides some of the practices of our church yep. more than a lot of other ones, you yeah. know, and it's really this exhortation that is to the shepherds of Israel. The mm -hmm. Lord is, has this prophecy and he's, he is uh, yeah. coming down hard on the on these leaders of Israel for Whoa, how they you, led it. Whoa, yeah, just, uh, literally, let me read a few phrases just so, to yeah. give us context. <clears throat> Ezekiel 34, 2. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you shepherds of Israel mm -hmm. who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? Mm -hmm. yeah. You eat the curds, you clothe yourself with wool, and you slaughter choice animals. 
but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak and healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them. And harshly and brutally, down below at verse 10, it says, uh, I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my pe- my flock from their mouths and it will no longer be food for them. Mm. I think that is a stern and strong warning yeah. Yeah. of, you know, even we think about <clears throat> this term of, of shepherding and the importance of that, that without the, um, uh, without this context and without this challenge, mm-hmm. we can, we can lose sight of how important this is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this yeah. is a, this is an important piece. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to kind of turn it to you guys for a little bit and go, um, what, what is the term shepherd and why do we see it used so often in scripture, especially of leadership? Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would say uh, <clears throat> that it's, it's a, a great analogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so rich in meaning there's so many things that we can get out of it because, uh, you know, a, a sheep, yep. which we don't like to be, you know, called sheep even you know, it's oh, an yeah. insult to call somebody a yeah. sheep, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, sheep are one of the, I think it might be the only animal that's defenseless and wow. can't take care of itself. If it, if it, uh, it'll drink too much, it'll eat too much. It'll, uh, hmm. sounds like a family reunion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, they, I guess even if they fall over, they can't get themselves back up. Wow. And so they need the care of a mm. uh, of a shepherd yep. uh, to uh, to even survive and to yep. thrive, mm. um, and you know they're not really intelligent. They'll yep. follow off of uh, you know f- f- follow off cliffs and follow strange things or whatever. They get curious and they wander yeah. away and things yep. like that. Have you seen that video that's floating around the internet where there's this this the sheep sh- stuck yeah. in the canal <laughs> and, and they just get him out and he he runs a little bit and he's right, <laughs> right back, back in. Yeah, I do remember <laughs> that one. Yeah. That's a great, yeah. you know, but yeah, yeah, it's really good. I'd me. heard of, uh, uh, a pastor talking about uh, this one uh, shepherding place in, I think it was Scotland or somewhere mm-hmm. over in the British mm-hmm. Isles. And uh, that there's this really steep cliff and the and the the sheep would get down on these they'd wander down and they couldn't get back off yeah. and they would fall off the cliff and die yeah it, it's just crazy yep. to think about yeah. yeah so not the brightest animals yeah. and uh not naturally uh gifted to defend themselves or take care of themselves yep yeah and then you know so then we have shepherds you know, and the shepherds uh you know will come in and and they they take care of them i remember mm-hmm. having a um, a meeting with some of my leaders and uh, my one friend, John, um, I was, I think I was here talking about Ezekiel 34 yep. mm. and I started to do the lesson and, and then he spoke up and mm. I realized, uh, he was a Basque sheep farmer from down Southern Idaho. Wow. Really? And, uh, and I <laughs> like was like, like, here, you take the white <laughs> board pen and you, yeah. you teach us. And man yeah. is so rich. Yeah. The things that they did, like, he's just like, this is how we took care of sheep. Yeah. Mm. Everything from anointing the eyes and, and all of that other stuff. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. 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 It's a rich, rich. I love that. Yeah. When I think of it, just like to what you had said, Chris, <laughs> you said, uh, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Yep. And that's a crazy reference because that job was not a desirable one Mm -hmm. (laughs) as the Jesus is being God himself, the God of the universe. I am the good shepherd. And he refers to himself as a shepherd in that culture. When he would have said that, it would have been like, so you're the worst job ever. You're, you're a part of the worst job Mm -hmm. ever. But when you look at scripture and what Jesus did and all those things, I know we're going to get into several pieces of it, but, Mm -hmm. uh, man, that's what he did. He saw after and he went to, and he, chased after the people that no one wanted to be around yeah. and he went to the yeah. prostitutes and the co- tax collectors and everyone was like what are you doing with these people mm-hmm. and as we think of being a shepherd it's messy with people it's difficult sometimes there's people that stray sometimes we're those people yeah. but there's a kind of no other beautiful <sighs> analogy oh, for yeah. me when i see that and it's kind of crazy at looking at the culture of when Jesus said that, yep. what he meant by that and what yeah. people would have wrestled with. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. You know? And so I, I think it's beautiful. I think it's all over scripture, old Testament, new Testament, mm-hmm. um, the, <clears throat> the, the things that we are called to do within that. And 
And so I, I'm excited love to that. talk about all this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I love that. So this is this is the context of we're talking about leading like a shepherd. And mm -hmm. again, we're talking to you group leaders, those who, who mm -hmm. really do shepherd yeah. our church in a lot of ways. And I think it's important to kind of make that transition of, so so why, and maybe just, this is kind of ad lib a little bit, yeah. But, yeah. but why... Why would we put that label on like a group leader? Why would we say mm. that you are a shepherd? What, what, how, explain that connection maybe a little bit. Yeah, that's really... yeah well. <clears throat> Not just the pastors and the elders playing that role. But why yeah, is that a yeah. group leader? Those paid players, right? Yeah. That we would yeah. Call. yeah. Um, well, first of all, you know, as a, as a pastor in this place, mm. uh, this is a big church. Mm. And we have a, a lot of people. There are a lot of... Um, you know, I oversee over thir uh, almost 30 groups, wow. uh, and I have about half as many as mo my team, yep. right? Mm. So we oversee a lot of groups, and I do mm. not have the margin or capacity to uh, properly shepherd. Really shepherd, yeah. Really shepherd uh, all mm. the people. Because you figure if I got 10 people in a group, that's a, that's a pretty good-sized church, actually, in America, mm. 300 people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I just do not have the margin to do that. Um, that's if, even if that was all I did, yeah. mm. you know, so, uh, we are, and when we're called to equip the saints for works of service, right. Part of that is equipping our leaders, yeah. um, to be, have that responsibility, yeah, have that responsibility yeah. as well to take care of the people in their group. I have my own small group. I shepherd the people Absolutely. in my small group. That's right. a great reminder too, is yeah. that all of us on staff that are playing a part in overseeing groups, we personally have our own groups that mm -hmm. we're a part of, and we play that role of shepherding, but to really shepherd well, it takes a team. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I, Christian thoughts on I, that? I just think of even the very beginning of Jesus's uh, ministry yeah. was very counterculture. So the people that he called were people that no one, no rabbi would look at. Mm -hmm. And for him, he was from the very beginning, even with the, the strategies that he was taking, yep. he was choosing people that were all different backgrounds that shouldn't get along that shouldn't it shouldn't make sense yeah. to say come follow me and in that he immediately <clears throat> started showing them mm -hmm. and releasing them yeah. to help them understand this isn't just me as a rabbi you're mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna see me do this i'm gonna model this for you but then i'm actually gonna send you out to do this yeah. and they were in the culture, untrained, uh, some of them were tax collectors, some of them yeah. were fishermen. And so the, the instilling knowledge of man, I am the rabbi. Mm -hmm. And as Jesus's ministry progressed, he said, I'm now friend. I call you friend. Right. Yeah. And you're actually, <clears throat> I want you to understand that you're actually shepherds as well. Love yeah. it. And that is, that is a beautiful thing, you know, yeah. for me in, in my life, uh, that, that shift when I started to see yep. the people I'm, I'm following and, and seeing, uh, were helping me see that. Yeah, they were helping me see that I was a shepherd as yeah. well. Yeah, and yeah. for us as group leaders, for all you guys and for groups and like you're the shepherds of your groups. Yep. Like our yeah. leaders are shepherds of their groups. God allows all of us to partake in yeah. all those things, and so mm -hmm. I know uh, for me that's that's kind of an amazing fact. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So. yeah, and like you said in the beginning, we are all sheep. And we can have the role of a shepherd and helping yeah. someone yeah. else. Yeah. And yeah, we we all stumble and fall. We need people ourselves. Yeah. You know? I think that's a good reminder. I, I yeah. think it's just to uh, capitalize on what you said um, about <clears throat> that um, our leaders, right, are taking care of their people, right? Yeah. Um, I'm reminded two things in my head right now is one is uh, I was just reading in scripture that, um, you know, Jesus said that, uh, you know, my sheep know my name. I know my mm. sheep and they know yeah. me. They know my voice. Yeah. I know That's them. Great. They yeah. know me. And uh, and I love that. And really, as a leader, our leaders know their people. When I oh, when yeah. I call my leaders on the phone, um, mm. I, you know, I could be like, hey, I haven't seen this person. They'll be, well, Here's they're they're here. They've been on vacation. They're, they've been sick, whatever. Our leaders mm. know where their people are. They do a great job yeah. uh, shepherding. But I don't think they would all think that they... Yeah are a shepherd. That's good. I think they do it intuitively because that's how yeah. uh, the good leaders are. Yeah. yeah there's, really there's good. another aspect of that, if I yeah. can, yeah. is that, um, cause it's just happened the other day where yeah. someone said the church never came and mm. did anything, right? The church didn't. Yeah. And we're like, your group was there. Your leader was there. Your people came around you. The people you're in relationship with, that is yeah. the church. Yeah. Totally. Right. And, yeah. um, and, you know, we've had situations where 
I've shown up at at uh, at the hospital mm-hmm. when something's uh, you know goes wrong or whatever, and the group's already there and they've got a meal train set up and they don't even notice that I'm coming in. And matter of fact, the fact that I'm coming in doesn't really matter too much. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it uh, obviously it's loving them and caring for them and they that's appreciated. But yep. um, mm-hmm. it's really like you know a cherry on top. It's not. Yeah it's not the real care that they're getting. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I think that's a key shift that we want our, our leaders. And, and if you're, if you're leading and you're like, Hey, this is a great encouragement challenge for you as a leader to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll say for myself, yeah. it's easy for me to show up and facilitate a conversation mm-hmm. for an hour and a half mm-hmm. on a Monday night it, yeah. that yeah. it's much harder for me to go, Hey, I didn't see you this week. Mm-hmm. How you doing? You yeah. know? Yeah. And, um, or, check in with people beyond the time. I just I have to work at that. That's yeah. not a natural mm-hmm. thing. And that's why I want to shift gears a little bit yeah. and go practical right. and just yeah. talk, let's talk practical for the next, you know, 10 minutes or so <clears throat> about, so, so what are some of the practical things that looks like for a group leader who really is living out what it means to lead like a shepherd? What are the things that you guys have learned? What are the things that you've seen from some of your group leaders? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think for me, and we talk about this a lot is, uh, you can't do what you're not yourself. Mm. And so some of yeah, that is, good, you know, who, who are, are we walking underneath Christ? Are we abiding in him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we ingesting his word? Are we making time for God in our lives and, and getting fed ourselves? Yeah. And so for us in this <clears throat> man, God desires that there are verses that God is that good shepherd. And for us mm-hmm. to not only just lead and, and tell, but to, to ingest it ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then out of that, man, God, God uses his word instilled in us mm-hmm. to be able to share and, and, help others see the word of God in their lives and applying it. And it's messy. It's not a one and done conversation. It's not a simple facilitation. It is a ongoing process, just like a shepherd follows the sheep. And when they stray and God's word and God's truth and knowing God's voice, both for me personally, but then helping others, people through his word, identifying that. And that can't just happen once a week. You know, that's, that's a process. That's a starting place and that, but that's a process and it can't be overnight either. I love that start because if we, if we bypass our personal abiding and, you know, being under the good shepherd, we can totally miss Mm -hmm. this analogy, which is we're under the care of the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great place to start practically for every group leader. You can't bypass personal abidance. Yeah. And and I would add to that is that all of us, ourselves included, um, we're also accountable to other men. Absolutely. And so um, we are sheep being mm-hmm. shepherded by somebody, yep. right? Even if it's a peer, a yeah. peer-to-peer shepherding. Um, but there's accountability that I have with other leaders and uh, co-workers. Mm-hmm. Um, and our our leaders, you guys have coaches, you have us here on staff that, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're hopefully shepherding you well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's important too, that that's we great. are both, like you said, sheep yeah. and shepherds. Um, but you mentioned like some practical things, right? Yeah. And, and I know we can get, Man, we can get way down in the weeds yeah. in this, and I know you, we don't want to do that in this episode. But the uh, I, I was just uh, someone in my group just uh, said to me the other day. They said, uh, "I really appreciate how you um, pursued this person in the group because you heard something that they said in group, yeah. and you wanted to ask some more questions on that. But it wasn't appropriate to do in group, yeah. and so I pursued them." And, and had coffee with them. And, and sometimes great. it's just a, 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 a call or I was helping another guy. He had a tree come down and, you know, help him chainsaw a tree up, mm. you know. And but while we're doing that, I'm asking him a question. How are you doing? Yeah. You know, what about this that's going on and that sort of thing? And, yeah. um, and he's like, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. What he was saying is that I see you being a shepherd. Yeah. He didn't use those words. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things like that. I know taking attendance and yep. understanding when people aren't in group or when they aren't going to church regularly. You know, I ask my people every week, uh, mm-hmm. Hey, who went to church this week? Or usually I see them 
because uh, I'm here through all the services. Actually, we started sitting together as a as a group, mm. uh, most of us. Cool. So you can see them. They're not yeah, there. Yeah, I can see yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, I, and I just know whether people are in my group have gone to church or not gone to church. I know whether they're in group or not in group. And when they're not in group, I know why. Yeah. Mm. And if they haven't gone to church, I, I know why. Yeah. And it's not that, you know, you got to be there every week. Um, mm. I want you to be there every week, but there are times when, you know, life happens and, and you, you can't do that. But I know... Right. I know the condition of my flock. Yeah. And that's what's important. That's yeah. really that's good. Really good. Yeah. Because we could get into every little minuscule detail. Yeah. And it's like without the right heart <clears throat> mm -hmm. of the shepherd, yeah. uh, we can miss, you know, it's like, hey, that wasn't needed. You know, right. that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Other thoughts. Yeah. I think of Jesus's words where he says uh, the hired hands, the hired people mm -hmm. flee when trouble comes. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of that. Our, heart, our people yeah. under us can see in us a heart of a shepherd or not. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if you guys have experienced that. There's yeah. been times with people or different situations where Absolutely. you can tell if they're ch checking boxes or they're actually thought through oh. with a plan mm -hmm. and like, man, where, where are you? And Hey, yeah. I'd love to, to hang out with you outside of this. And mm -hmm. Hey, like attendance, like you said, but also having an ability to know where people are and then <clears throat> seeing that they might have some other steps that need to be taken, mm -hmm. which comes a little bit of being intentional for me yeah. to go, hey, I might not know all the things that people can step into in other parts of the church, mm -hmm. but I know that there are other people, uh, you know, in, in the past, I didn't know all those things. Then as I grew and stuff being mm -hmm. in this position, now yeah. a part of our role is to have resources to point people to other ministries or other yep. groups or other needs. And a part of being a shepherd is learning how to identify our people, their needs, what steps to take. Maybe they need a yeah. men's group yeah. out of this. Maybe I have the season to do that with my own guys. Maybe I don't, mm -hmm. but I at least have an awareness of yeah. different areas to send them. Yeah. Man, maybe they're really struggling to ingest God's word in their life. Mm -hmm. Do I have <clears throat> a, an idea or if I don't, where I could look to suggest yeah. a devotional that they can take in their own time? Yeah. Do I have those plans and that doesn't come over yeah. night but that is the That's steps great. of you mean of you don't things. like at the end of every group you don't walk away with a list of like <laughs> yeah. this is how i'm going to shepherd all my yeah. people this week no that's a process right, right? most yeah. of it i know for me it's just like hmm. god it puts on my heart i think about the conversation i had in group and i think man you know i think steve I needs a call yeah. that's great you know yeah. and i'll just give him a call yep. and then god I, I trust god to guide me in that he's been so faithful in yeah. that where yeah. people are like how did you know to call me i'm like yeah. Because I just totally. was obedient to that that uh, urging yeah. of the Holy Spirit. But I'm not going, yeah. you know, it's just like, you know, spiritual growth. I'm not like, what do they need to grow spiritually? I don't know. I just, all the right? time, yeah. You're seeking the Holy Spirit's leading and yeah. going, yeah. What, what's he calling me to do? One thing you, you brought up, I just want to talk about for a second, just kind of address, um, you know, you talked about maybe a men's group or a men's breakout, mm -hmm. a women, women's breakout. How does that play into this conversation? Yeah, it's good. Well, oh, you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. I think uh, for us as a church, we've talked about this all the time, right? That we are all uh, priests and priestesses of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And for us, we know that God has called us to uh, all of us to be involved in his kingdom. Mm. And I always, I can kind of play on words here where, sh where shepherds and shepherdesses, uh, <laughs> <laughs> however you say that, yeah, that's, that's correct. Right, yeah. uh, that all of us play a part. And for our gals in our groups or our breakouts or our guys, like that is a piece of all of it. Yeah. Our, our gals to see our, our gals and, and to, to follow up and to, yeah. to love them. And that that's just as much as part of it, just as we're all ambassadors, yeah. we're all priests and priestesses, you know, that, that that's a reality. And I, I don't yeah, know what so you important. think with that. And so, oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I, I hmm. did some research on you know, Rachel, right? Isaac's hmm. wife, Rachel, she was called a shepherdess, right? She went wow. out to meet, um, uh, yeah. So there's shepherdesses in the, in the Bible. That's yeah. not something we just made up, which is good. So, but when we talk about shepherding, Hmm. There's there's some general shepherding that I can do, like yeah. people going to church, they not going to church and things like that. But there are things that, that are not appropriate for me, conversations that are not appropriate for me to have with another woman. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. not my wife. Yeah. Yep. Um, or that even that the guys should be, you know, talking about and often won't talk about. So when we do breakouts, we'll hear a lot more about things that yep. real needs, right? Yep. Real things that are going on that are... Uh, 
uh, you know, just more uh, delicate. And and we've we've gotta, talked about breakouts before, but just give a quick context when we say breakout. What does oh, that yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. So in our uh, in our in our life groups that are mixed gender, that's mm-hmm. our definition. Uh, we want uh, occasionally, we just say once a month, for the guys to meet separately than the girls. Often it's in the same house. Yeah. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. people do it a lot of different ways. Sometimes um, they uh, uh, you know, meet upstairs, downstairs. Sometimes it's just for prayer or a portion of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, But th- then you have a, a woman, the Oftentimes it's the leader's mm-hmm. spouse. It falls to her often. Sometimes there's another woman in the group yep. that would step up into that position, the woman's breakout mm-hmm. leader. And often we delegate that, even though if we, yeah. we can do it, I'll, totally. I'll often delegate that to my co-lead. And uh, and we have a conversation just with the guys, and then they have a conversation with That's the gals, yep. and they can talk about things that they wouldn't normally yep. share or just speak more freely yep. than they would in mm-hmm. mixed company. But yes, I think you, yeah. you're really wise in saying this – this opens up the doors for shepherding uh, appropriate to men and women. Because yeah. again, when we open up an emotional door there, there's some dangers that come into play. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. shepherding can be dangerous in that sense. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then we would see this rebuke like we saw in Ezekiel 34. Mm-hmm. You're not really caring for. Oh, yeah. So I think that's mm-hmm. a that's an important thing that we recognize. Mm-hmm. And that's what we see, you know, we talk, you know, we talk about older men and younger men and yep. older women, younger women. There's a biblical principle of shepherding in that. I think it's important for us to recognize that. Yeah. Any last thoughts on on shepherding? Anything practical that you're thinking of? Yeah, I think for me, what what's so valuable about Jesus, you know, the Pharisees would ask Jesus, hey, what's what gets me to heaven? What's the most important thing? And Jesus summed it up, loving God and loving others. So good. And shepherding can be this huge thing where there is so many elements to it and there's always things we can learn and grow right. in, but we don't want to overcomplicate. It's it's, yeah. it's getting with people, loving people, mm-hmm. going out. We, yeah. we think it's a win when <clears throat> when groups know their people and are showing up at hospitals and they're calling us and going, hey, just mm-hmm. want to let you know this mm-hmm. is what's going on. And uh, there are things that Jesus taught in depth on yep. and he did with his disciples, but he also it's not overcomplicating. It's oh, yeah. it's loving people, yeah. sitting with people, mm-hmm. growing with people. And I, uh, as a leader, you know, as a desiring leader growing in, in, in my walk years back, had such a desire to do God's, mm-hmm. God's uh, work. And I would get kind of psyched out. Mm-hmm. Like, am I doing it? Am I, yeah. am I like, yeah. And, and I'm sure there was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there was ups and downs and there's Just no perfect leader, simple, but it was, it's, it's, <laughs> it's loving people well, you know, yeah. and, and that's a part of it. And, and so I, I guess I would say yeah. that to, to leaders and, mm-hmm. and stuff that there's areas to grow and learn and more things that we can, can try, but man, it's loving Love people. That. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So. Mm. Yeah. I would just add, uh, you know, I was thinking about, you know, that, that picture you had of the sheep that jumped up they the get out of the well <laughs> or the, uh, the canal and, and yeah. right back in. And, and we don't always have sheep in canals, but it does happen, right? Yeah. People get into uh, tough spots and, whether yeah. that's uh, you know someone passing away or someone in the hospital or mm-hmm. uh, a, a diagnosis, whatever it is, and often we don't know what to do, yeah. yeah. And we can freak out. Well, here's what I tell you to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go. Yeah. Go. Just go and visit. Yeah. Make the phone call. Reach out. That's a great. If it's reminder. appropriate. Yep. Go. Uh, when in doubt, go. That's yeah. really good, Fred. And, yeah. and don't worry about having all the right things to say because they're not going to remember what you say anyway. Mm. Oof. Yeah, they're going to remember how they felt when you were there. Yeah. That's really good. And and uh, and and don't try to have the words. Just tell mm. them you're sorry and you you're you're hurting for them, and yeah. Uh, yeah. that'll go a long yeah. way. It's just it's just uh, you know weeping with those who weep, mourn with those who mourn, right? Mm. Uh, and just coming alongside yep. people, it it'll it'll bond you closer than. That's uh, super good. Uh, yeah. That's some great reminders. I think the way you guys kind of wrap that up was just amazing because mm-hmm. you have uh, loving God, loving others, and really attempting to lead like a shepherd mm-hmm. and to really care for people. That's the heart. It, like there's no, there's no secret formula, right? And that's right. kind of what I heard. There's not like if you just do these things, it's trusting the Holy Spirit. And also recognizing one of the things I heard you say, you know, you know, sheep can bite. Yeah. yeah. Sheep and sheep can stink. And <laughs> it's a dirty job. We're going full circle here. Yeah. It can be a rough job. And so, you know, kind of bringing it to a close group leaders, we want to just remind you that you are making a difference yeah. and it can be a messy job. It, sometimes it can be a great, wonderful, yeah. encouraging, but sometimes it can be tough because sheep can bite. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what you're doing 
does make a difference mm-hmm. and that you have the authority yes. to shepherd. I think yes. that's an important reminder, you know, that, mm-hmm. you know, from our elders to our pastors, to our women's discipleship leaders across our campuses, you are given that authority to shepherd and, and we're just, we're praying for you. We're praying. This is a, it is a heavy load. Mm-hmm. It's a difficult task, but mm-hmm. it, it's making a difference and you matter. Yeah. A couple yeah. uh, final just thoughts, just uh, to go next steps. What do we do with this? Um, Fred, you mentioned a few books. Want to mention those? Uh, yeah, there was uh, The Way of the Shepherd. Great. And uh, I, have, like I, think a shepherd? I left my copy over there, Lead Like a Shepherd. Yep. Yep. And uh, you had one that you were talking about. It was, uh, right yeah, Now Media. Right Now Media. There's also Lead Like a Shepherd by Larry Osborne. who does a video series based off his book that takes the snippets from it. Yeah. And I know a lot of uh, Perfect. people have access to that. Yep. Mm-hmm. We will put all those links in our show notes. And so you can check that out. Check out that leader guide on uh, realliferesources.org. And again, I want to thank you for all that you do. Mm-hmm. Hope this conversation was helpful. Look forward every single month. Beginning of the month, we're posting new episodes. Keep an eye on what's coming up. We got a lot of great episodes coming up. But again, thank you for all that you do. We are grateful for the investment you make each week as you reach the world for Jesus one person at a time and make biblical disciples in relational environments. For notes from this show and other great resources to help you grow, visit realliferesources.org.